Good morning, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about building a diamond engagement ring with a $3,000 budget. Now, there's actually a lot of options when it comes to building a ring in this price range. And I want to talk about how you can kind of maximize your ring, get the most bang for your buck, and what it's going to look like if you choose to get a lab diamond over a natural diamond and where you're going to find sort of your best value in that range. So we're going to go over that today and hopefully get you guys on the right track. Now I am going to be using James Allen for this video. They're a very large online diamond retailer and the advantage of using them is they allow you to pick your setting and pick your stone separate, which really allows you to figure out how much you want to allocate towards your setting and how much you want to allocate towards your stone, which ultimately is really going to change the way your ring looks. So they're a really, really good option if you're on a fixed budget because you can really get exactly what you want by building your own ring. So if you guys want to follow along or take a look at any of the pages that I'm looking at here, I will have a link to their website down in the video description if you guys want to check them out. So that will be down below. You can click on that link. So when you start to build your ring, the best thing that you can do is to start with a setting. And the reason I say this is because if you have a specific style of ring, in mind the only way you're going to be able to achieve that style is by getting the, the setting that matches that style so realistically there's not many options when it comes to different settings if you have a particular style in mind so be sure to start with the setting typically these fancier settings are going to be anywhere from 800 to about 1500 dollars so it is going to take a decent chunk of your budget but if that is really the style that you like it's worth downgrading the stone size to get the style However, if you're not too worried about the band and you're more fascinated by the diamond itself, then James Allen has some really good options for regular solitaire bands that are very inexpensive. One of them is the 14K white gold two millimeter knife edge solitaire engagement ring. This specific band, and I'll actually put a video on the screen right now showing this band in real life paired with a one carat lab diamond, which is very much in your budget. Uh, this specific setting is four prongs. It's got a knife edge, very inexpensive, but it's a very simplistic, timeless setting that will look really good and it'll allow you to put a lot of that money into the diamond to get it as big as possible. And because it's such a simple setting, you'll get a lot of pop um, from the diamond and it will be the main focus. Um, if you like that setting, they also have the same setting in a six prong configuration as well. And I'll put another video on the screen showing a six prong solitaire setting. And the prongs on the six prong versus the four prong, you can see are a little bit smaller. So it brings that diamond into focus a little bit easier and quicker. So I think I actually really like the six prong better than the four prong, but it's all about your preference and what you like. So be sure to check those out. Those are great inexpensive options. Another great option is the comfort fit band. If you don't like the idea of the shape of the knife edge band, you can go with the comfort fit band here. It's right around $300, so a little bit more expensive, but you get that nice smooth outside edge. So once you've found the band that you like, you can go ahead and select it and then move on to choosing a diamond. And that's where we can talk about the different variations and a lot of the different options that you have. When picking a diamond, the biggest decision that you need to make is whether you want to go with an earth created diamond or a lab created diamond. Now I am going to strongly push you in the direction of going with a lab created diamond with this budget because you are just simply going to get so much more ring for your money. Okay, lab diamonds are a lot more affordable, they look amazing, and they will give you a bigger bang for your buck. To help demonstrate this, I wanna show you a video of a $7,200 natural diamond in a solitaire band versus a $2,100 lab diamond in a solitaire band. Both of these rings side by side, can you tell which one is the $7,200 natural diamond and which one is the $2,100 lab diamond? there is a huge difference in price, $5,000, over $5,000 difference. And in my opinion, they both look amazing. Now the ring on the left is actually the $2,100 lab diamond and the ring on the right is the $7,200 natural diamond. So they look very close to one another. They have very similar light performance and you are gonna get so much more diamond for your money if you go with a lab diamond. So there's not, in my opinion, a lot of drawbacks to the lab diamond. They're incredibly affordable, they're real diamonds, and I think over time you will learn to appreciate the size of your diamond rather than the origin of your diamond of where it came from. That's the whole fun of a diamond engagement ring is to see that diamond sparkle, and the bigger that diamond is, the better light performance you're gonna get, and ultimately it's just gonna look a lot better and look like a more expensive ring. So I strongly recommend you get a lab diamond, but let's take a look at both of the natural earth created diamonds and the lab diamond 
diamonds and see what you can get for the price. So assuming you went with a solitaire band, we're gonna go ahead and search with some parameters here on James Allen. We're gonna start with a round diamond because typically round diamonds are the most expensive. So we'll start with a round diamond just to be conservative with our price. In terms of color, we're gonna go with an H or higher. Now, if you have a question about color, H I would say is kind of the cutoff of where I would go with the warmest diamond. F is a really, really good mid-range, but there's a very little difference between the two. I'll put a video on the screen of an H-colored diamond versus an F-colored diamond, and you can see just a slight little hue of warmness in that H-colored diamond in natural sunlight. I'll also show those same two diamonds in indoor lighting, and I think in indoor lighting it's even less noticeable. That H-colored diamond looks even more similar to the f color. So the difference in color is a very slight difference, so I wouldn't get hung up too much on the color, but I would say H or better is a very safe bet. In terms of clarity, VS2 or higher is another very safe bet. We always want to get an ideal cut. And for natural diamonds, really what we're going to be able to get in our price range of $2,000 to $2,600 is going to be a diamond between a half a carat and 0.8 carat. So if we take a look here, as you can see, multiple 0.8 carat diamonds, H color, right around that $2,600 mark. So if you do go with a natural diamond, you're not going to meet that one carat threshold, which I know it sounds silly, but getting to that one carat threshold when someone asks, oh, how big is the diamond? I know it's dumb, but to be able to say it's one carat or larger, it's just kind of a cool thing to say. And it's something that even though it doesn't sound like a big deal, oftentimes you can get hung up on it in the future. So if you do go with a natural diamond, you're not going to quite be able to get to that one carat mark and be within your budget. Now, if we look at lab diamonds, you set the same search parameters, round, H or higher, VS2 or higher, ideal cut. Here, we can easily get a 1.25 carat diamond right around that $2,000 to $2,500 mark. As you can see, there are multiple diamonds here, 1.24 carat, E color VS2 for right around 2200 bucks. There are multiple, multiple options here. And a 1.25 carat diamond is going to look a lot bigger than a 0.8 or 0.75. It is going to be dramatically bigger and you're really going to notice the difference. So when people look at your ring, your $3,000 ring is going to look more like an eight to $10,000 ring with that lab diamond. And like I said, I'll put the video on the screen again. I think there's very little difference between the two, and I think you'd be crazy to not go with a lab diamond and to really maximize that, that appeal of your engagement ring with that giant stone in the center of it. So that's my take on the natural versus the lab. I think you get a lot more bang for your buck. Now, when choosing a stone, um, if you're not super knowledgeable on stones and they kind of all look great to you or you find a couple that you like, one of the really important features that you can do is let's say you wanna pick this stone, for example. What you can do is you can actually go on their site and if you do the real-time diamond inspection, you can speak with the online chat and they will give you the report for that specific diamond if you wanna take a look at it. So whether it's an IGI report or a GIA report, they will give you that report, they'll email it to you. And then what you can ask them is you can say, here's my budget, this is what I'm looking for. Talk to them about, this is roughly the size that I want, but I don't wanna go over $3,000. And they'll pull up a variety of diamonds on screen and they'll show you the different characteristics and what they like about the diamonds and they'll help pick you uh, the best diamond for your budget. You can also give them a call as well and they'll help you with that on the phone. But really, they have a really keen eye on certain things that you should watch out for. So they're a great resource before you just pull the trigger. You can always double check with them and see what they think about the specific diamond that you're looking at. And if not, they'll point you in the right direction of something that's a little bit better and they'll tell you why they think that diamond is better. So guys, I hope this video was helpful in building your $3,000 engagement ring. There's a lot of really great rings that can be built in this budget, and it's a fantastic budget to be in. You can make a really, really nice ring if you pair it with a lab diamond, and it's going to look far more expensive than you're spending. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. All of the rings that you guys seen in this video in the B-roll shots did come from James Allen. So if you want to check out their website, like I said, I will have a link down in the video description. Hope this video was helpful. If it helped you out, be sure to leave a like. Let us know in the comments what kind of ring you're building. And until next time, guys, take care. Good luck on your ring shopping, and we'll see you in the next video.